this last video in this section, we're going to identify the key characteristics of the cosine function that has this form. Okay, so if we have a function a cos bx plus c quantity plus d, then we notice that we can identify the amplitude, which is going to be basically the height of the graph, right? Um, and then if a is less than zero, we have the reflection. This is the exact same thing that we saw for the sine function. The period, same function, 2 pi over b, right? And then phase, negative c over b. And then finally, vertical shift given by d. All right, so essentially, everything that we've already seen so far with the sine function, we could use with respect to the cosine function, right? And so in these problems, what we're going to do is we are going to find the amplitude, the period, the phase shift, the vertical shift, any transformations, and then we're going to plot the, the parent function and then the given function on the same graph. All right, first of all, let's think that we can rewrite this function, g of x, as negative 3 cosine of 2x plus 0 plus 0. Okay, so that way we have identified what a, b, c, and d are. In this case, we have that a is equal to negative 3, b is equal to 2, c is 0, and d is 0. And so the amplitude, remember, is the absolute value of whatever a is. Okay, So it's the absolute value of negative 3, which is going to be equal to positive 3. Right? So basically what that means is that this function is going to go all the way up to 3 and then all the way down to negative 3 on the for the y values. Period, that's going to be 2 pi over b. So that's 2 pi over b, which in this case, we know that b is 2. So that becomes 2 pi over 2, which is just going to be pi. Right? So that's easy enough. Even easier is the phase shift. The phase shift is opposite c over b. Well, we know that c is 0. Okay, so that's going to be the opposite of 0 over 2, which is just 0. Okay, so that means that we're not moving the function left to right. We're just basically stretching it out. And then also we're contracting it horizontally. There's not going to be any um, vertical shift. Okay, so vertical shift is 0. Okay, that's just because d is equal to 0. And we do notice that since a is equal to negative 3, which is less than 0, we are going to reflect in the x-axis. All right, so let's plot both of the functions on the same, uh, the same Cartesian plane. So y equals cos x, which we just plotted a few moments ago in the previous video. And then we have negative 3 cosine. of 2x, right? And that's the one that's in green, okay? So notice that, first of all, instead of starting at this point, which would be usually 3 comma 0, it's actually flipped over, okay? So it starts at negative 3, 0, and then it goes all the way up and all the way back down. And this point right here is pi comma negative 3. So it basically takes pi to go through one period of this, okay? So pretty cool how we can verify what these sorts of key components are of the graph without utilizing just the graphic calculator. So in this example, we have 2 cos 1 third x plus a quarter, uh, I'm sorry, pi quarters plus 1. So we know that A is going to be 2, B is going to be 1 third, C is pi fourths, and D is equal to 1. The amplitude is the absolute value of 2, which is 2. All right, so we're going to go all the way up to 2, all the way down to negative 2 before we do any sort of other transformations. The period is going to be 2 pi over b. And b in this case is 1 third. So we get 2 pi over 1 third, which is going to be 2 pi times 3 over 1, which is 6 pi. All right, so it's going to take a long time for this function to go through one period, all right? So it's going to be really stretched out horizontally. Um, this was B, by the way, right? For letter C, our phase shift is going to be negative C over B. And that's going to be negative pi fourths over one third. 
or negative pi fourths times three over one or negative three pi fourths, all right? So it's gonna be shifted a little bit to the left, okay? And then finally for our vertical transformation, it's gonna go up one unit, okay? Because D is equal to one. And since A is greater than zero, there is no reflection. Okay, so let's go ahead and graph this. Okay, so we're gonna plot, plot both of these functions just to kind of see what they both look like. So we had two cos of one third x plus pi over four and then plus one. All right, now I'm gonna have to zoom out a lot. All right, um, I want you to notice that this graph takes a long time to go through one period, okay? So um, right here, now notice we have the point negative three, four, negative three pi fourths. That's because remember, it was shifted. So you might remember that this thing was shifted three pi fourths to the left, okay? And then all the way over here is 21 pi fourths and the lowest point is gonna be negative one. Now, usually it would have been negative two, but we shifted up one. And notice the highest point is three. We shifted up one unit, okay? So that's a way that you can check is to kind of look at some of these key points that are on the graph, okay? Um, and Desmos does a really good job of showing you where some of these key points are. All right. Um, in this final example, we have negative one-fifth cos 2x minus 2 pi thirds minus 3. A, negative one-fifth, not negative 11. So A is negative one-fifth. Okay, so you can imagine that this is going to be a pretty, um, it's not going to go too high or too low. B is 2. C is going to be negative 2 pi thirds. D is negative three, right? And so the amplitude is the absolute value of negative one fifth, which is one fifth, right? So basically without any transformations, this is gonna go up to one fifth and down to negative one fifth. After the transformation, we'll see a little bit differently. Um, our period is going to be two pi over B or two pi over two otherwise known as pi. For our phase shift, that's the opposite of C over B, which is going to be the opposite of negative two pi thirds divided by two. And then we should do a little simplification of this. Now, clearly double negative turns into a positive. We multiply by the reciprocal. So this is going to be two pi thirds. The reciprocal of two is one half, right? And so that's just going to end up being pi thirds. Notice that we have negative three for D. And so this is going to shift down three units. And then finally, we know that A is negative one fifth, which is less than zero. So we are going to reflect in the X axis. All right, now let's plot this function just to verify that our function, first of all, should be very hard, vertically compressed, but then moved up and down and the period's a little bit more compact, right? So we had negative one fifth, and we had a two X, and then we had a minus two pi thirds, and then we had a minus three. All right. Um, and so let me just verify that that was indeed what we needed. All right, so negative one fifth, two, negative two pi thirds, and three. All right, and that looks good. All right, so this is the function. All right, now notice it does not go very high or low. Okay, in fact, it's it's pretty flat if you would. Okay, so it does have like the, the periodicity within it. Okay, um, but I want you to also notice that compared to the regular cosine function, it doesn't do all that much. Okay. Um, here's that shift, okay? So you might remember that one of the things that we said with respect to this was that the shift was going to be um, this pi thirds, all right? And then our period was only pi this time. So um, it's gonna be more compact, all right? So that makes sense when we take a look at this, okay? So here's five pi six. So 
basically it's going from negative pi six to five pi six. So that's a period of one, right? Um, and then also notice it was translated down three units and obviously it is reflected, okay? So everything that we thought would, was going to happen does make sense. Great, so that's everything for this section, okay? Um, key things to remember in this section are to get really familiar with these formulas, okay? So be careful, comfortable with your period formula, make sure that you understand how to get the amplitude and the reflection, this phase shift and this vertical shift, okay? All right, now in the next section, we're gonna take a look at the graphs of the other four trigonometric functions. And a lot of, in fact, those four are gonna have asymptotes in them. So the domains are not going to be all real numbers, um, and there's less things that we can model with a tangent function, as well as a cosecant, as well as a tangent function, et cetera. Um, but we are going to see um, you know, what the graphs of these look like and the key characteristics of those graphs in our next video series.